All mushrooms are edible, although some only once. And in this episode, we're going to be doing two separate builds of mushrooms. One we're going to be modifying a store-bought mushroom, and the other one we're going to be building from scratch out of polymer clay. For our first mushroom build, we're going to be using these store-bought decorative mushrooms. I had a coupon, so I was able to get them at 55% off. These toadstools are colorful and come in a variety of sizes. I'm going to use these 5 cm or 2 inch round wood boards as the base for our mushrooms. You can use foam board or chip board, but I wanted to use a heavy and durable base. This size of base should allow for 2 or 3 mushrooms on each of them. Let's take a closer look at our store bought mushrooms. You can see how the red fades around the edges and kind of spoils the illusion. The white dots or scales are not all opaque. There's no detail on the underside which I can forgive since the bottom won't be looked at very much while at the table. I think I want to repaint the mushroom cap so that it's a much more vibrant red. You could use miniature paints or simple dollar store acrylic paint. I'm going to use this Army Painter Pure Red because I like how bright it is. The store-bought mushroom has a velvet texture on it, so I may end up using a little more paint than I wanted to. However, I can tell already that the new red is much more lively. I need to make sure that I coat the mushroom right up to the outer edge. Now let's compare the newly painted mushroom to the old one. The coat of paint really makes this mushroom pop and I'm very happy with the results. Next we want to use some white paint to replace the old white dots or scales on the mushroom cap. We can see where the old dots were located and cover them up again. We can also add some new white dots. Now that our mushrooms are repainted, I'll glue them to our base. I received a brand new hot glue gun this Christmas and I'm going to use it for the first time. We just need a thick dollop of hot glue and then we can use a craft stick to spread the glue around the base of the mushroom. Now I didn't show my planning process where I was going to place the mushrooms so I don't crowd them together. On this base I'm going to place three mushrooms. Next we're going to repeat this process but with only two mushrooms. I took a walk down the back alley and found some interesting rocks that we can use to add some variety to our build. We're going to add a rock in place of the third mushroom to balance out the appearance. You'll need to plan where the different features will be placed so you don't crowd the base. Next we're going to use this fine turf to cover our base. This is a great product and comes in a variety of colors and coarseness. And just so you know, I'm not affiliated with Woodland Scenics nor have they sponsored this video. Once the mushrooms are secure, we can add some old fashioned PVA glue to coat the base. We want to make sure that we cover the entire base and the edges too. If you want, you can lightly coat some of the mushroom stock, but no more than a centimeter or a quarter inch up. When adding your turf, I suggest using a small spoon so you can target where you're pouring the turf. Make sure to get as much of the base covered as you can. We want to add glue and turf all around the outside edge of the base as well. After our first turf layer is dry, we can see where the wood is showing through. We'll need to cover that wood up before we can move on. To do that, we can use some 50-50 PVA and water mixture to coat the first layer of turf. We can spread the 50-50 around with a paintbrush. This will reinforce the first layer and provide glue for the second layer of turf. While the 50-50 is still quite wet, we can add other colored turf, flocking or foliage. We have this autumn colored flocking that I want to add in some small amounts on the base. Next, I want to add another colorful accent to our build. I'm choosing these meadow flowers, but clump foliage or some other colorful plant will work as well. We can use some basic PVA glue to attach our flowers. But be careful, we don't want to overcrowd our build. We want our scatter terrain to look like it's teeming with life, but not some kind of fungal riot. For a final step on this build, I want to paint the exposed wood with some brown paint. I think the burnt umber will look like exposed dirt patches. We can just paint over a few spots here and there. If these exposed areas were larger, I'd add more turf instead of the burnt umber paint. And here's the final view of our store-bought mushrooms. The new paint makes them look quite vibrant and I think they'll look great at the table. I miss that there are no gills on the underside of the mushrooms, but I'm still happy with the final result. For our second mushroom build, we're going to be using polymer clay. 
We covered using this building material quite extensively in Series 4, Episode 2, on our Gingerbread Golem. I'll put a link in the corner for you so that you can check it out if you're looking for more details on using polymer clay. We need a non-stick work surface to work with the clay. So I wrapped a piece of cardboard in baking parchment paper. You could actually use this work surface over and over again. Next I want to talk about the color choices we have available. We want to use colors that highlight one another, like this light blue and orange. These are complementary colors on the color wheel. Here's a sample of the color theory we discussed in another video. I'll put a link in the corner for you to check it out. Complementary colors work best together like this yellow and blue. The green and red are another great example. However, I don't want to make Christmas mushrooms. As a result, I'll think I'll use this orange and light blue to create our fantasy mushrooms. First, we take some orange polymer clay, which will be our mushroom cap. We roll some clay into a ball and flatten it out into a circle. Next, we take some white polymer clay and flatten out a circle that's the same size as the first one. We then press the two circles together and blend the outer edges. Now we grab a tool with a sharp edge and we start making lines around the center of our mushroom. These are the gills. Don't worry if you can't see the gills very well, we can actually deepen these grooves later on. Next we can use a round object like a marble or a tool like this one in order to help mold the cap into a bell-like shape. Now we use some of the blue polymer clay in order to create various sized scales to cover the cap. I suggest experimenting with different ways that you can do this until you find a method that you're happy with. I recommend that you keep the colorful scales to a reasonable number. After all, you don't want to hide the orange mushroom cap. Next, we need to make our stem. This is easily accomplished by rolling the clay into a pillar and adding some texture to it in the form of long grooves. If you want longer stems, I suggest that you bake the stem and the cap separately and then glue them together afterwards. Otherwise, the weight of the cap will compress, deform, and bend the stem. Next, we gently press the stem into our concave groove that we made in the bottom of our cap. Then, with some flat surface tool or a crafting stick, we want to blend the two surfaces together. Then, we want to add a skirt ring or annulus to our stem. I used a glue stick to roll the clay into a flat rectangle so I could wrap it around the stem. I then blended the top and joined the seams together. On the bottom of the annulus, I lifted up the clay to create a frilly skirt-like shape around the stem's circumference. And finally, I went in with a craft knife and reshaped the gills under the cap. And that's how we make a mushroom out of polymer clay! To finalize our mushrooms, we need to bake them in the oven. Make sure to follow the polymer clay instructions when you're baking your objects. Just a reminder, we talked about the baking process in our gingerbread golem video in much more detail. Once our mushrooms have cooled, we're going to add a few brown highlights with this Citadel Seraphim Sipia wash. We want to bring up some of the awesome textures that we made in the white areas of our mushroom. I want to thin out our shade a little bit, so I'll remove the excess wash onto this piece of foam board. We just want to add a few areas of color to the white textures. I'll zoom in so you can see that I'm just lightly brushing the outer edges of our textured features. The shade will lighten up as it dries, so you may want to add a second layer after you see the results of the first. Next on our bases, I want to add these faux moss stones that I found at the dollar store. These are easy to cut in half since they're made of foam. Then we simply glue the mossy half we want to our base. And then we add the mushrooms. Once the glue is dry, we can decorate our base the same way that we did for our store-bought mushrooms. Now that everything is dry, we can look at our completed homemade mushrooms. I'm very happy with how these turned out. The colors are vibrant and eye-catching, and the color palette is awesome. These will make great scattered terrain pieces on any game table. As great as these mushrooms turned out, I still have a few ideas on how to make more. So you can look forward to that video in the not too distant future. Between these two versions, I'm not quite sure which I like better. The store-bought mushrooms were much easier and quicker to make. However, the details on the homemade mushrooms are much more lively to look at. I'd appreciate you letting me know in the comment section which you prefer. If you'd like to support what we're doing here at the Gamesmith, please hit the subscribe button. If you're already a subscriber, please hit the thumbs up button and leave a comment. You might also check out our blog at thegamesmith.org. We post the building materials for all our crafts on our website too. You might also check us out on Facebook, Pinterest, and Instagram. Until next time, I'll see you at the table.